with your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's a local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go on this Monday, January 31st, 2022, Real Talk Memphis is on the air. Very nice to have you with us on uh, this Monday, the last Monday in January. It just, it, I swear, it seemed like yesterday when we were starting this year and we're already one month down and 11 to go. Uh, so enough of that. Glad to have you with us. As I said, I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Gang's all here. We are Fired up and ready to go on this Monday. I hope that you had a good Monday, had a nice weekend, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Keeping safe and uh, you know, and keeping comfortable and dry. Now it's six o'clock on Monday evening. Now you can uh, safely uh, assume the position uh, in front of your mobile device or your radio or however it is you are getting to us. And speaking of that. You're always wondering how you can get this fine piece of radio broadcasting. Well, I'm here to tell you all about it. You can do it in several ways, actually. We are on the air right now live and local, 91.7 WYXR on your FM radio side. We are also on the station website, which is WYXR.org. You can also catch us on the TuneIn app. Put in WYXR in the search, and you can uh, hear us and we do this little thing called Facebook Live, and a little later on this evening, we will also be on YouTube. So uh, as uh, Lola always says, like, follow, share, and subscribe. I actually, it's like I said, I had a thumbs up. See, I got it right, didn't I? See, that's good. See, all those things to help to support, build, and grow this radio show. I appreciate you very, very much. Now, uh, before we get into the show, and we got a lot to deal with tonight and a lot to talk about uh, ahead of our guest, we always like to celebrate you, and uh, we, you know, it, it, it takes a little effort to 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 go from one year to another year, and so on and so on. So if you made that trip around the sun one more again, this shout out is for you. But it can't happen until I say, hit it, Lola. Happy It's your birthday, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. Happy birthdays go out to Delicia de Graffery. Happy birthday to you. Lewis Brownlee, it is your birthday, sir. He is the uh, one of the PIOs, the public information officer, for the Memphis uh, Police Department. Happy birthday. Carmen Hicks, celebrating her birthday on this day, as is Katrina Ross. Uh, Yungasa Wairat. Uh, Wayrire, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think I muffed that up, actually. Uh, Teresa Ship, it is your birthday today. Shulandra Kelly, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Michelle Mimi Miller. Tina Huglet, celebrating today. Ellis Anthony, celebrating a birthday. And Gary Shelton is also celebrating a birthday. So, to each and every one of you from all of us here at Real Talk Memphis, happy birthday. I hope you, hope you had a wonderful day, and we hope to be with you again next year celebrating like we're doing today. Thank you, Lola. Appreciate it. Uh, also, a couple of uh, special announcements before we get into it. Every year, uh, the Memphis Flyer does um, a wonderful tribute uh, to the top 20 
under the age of 30. And uh, they recently uh, put that out in the paper. If you haven't gotten it, check out the uh, Memphis Flyer, the current edition, and so you can check out some of these folks. Congratulations and uh, uh, to each and every one of you who made the list uh, for the 2022 year. Special shout-out goes to a family friend. Her name is uh, Valencia Jennings, and her mama uh, is listening to the show right now. Uh, so <laughs> very, very happy uh, for you, Sita. And, of course, I know you're very proud of your daughter, as we all are. She works in uh, human resources at Baptist Hospitals, the Bas- Baptist Hospital Medical Group, and she's also the COO of Home T3AM Hoops. So uh, congratulations for making that list. Uh, these are our future leaders. And we need to celebrate their accomplishments and everything that they do on the positive side so we can continue to encourage them and maybe they can encourage others that are coming up behind them. So congratulations and shout outs to each and every one. And speaking of shout outs, uh, I got a, got a call. Now, well, not, a, not necessarily a call, but I got a little notice this afternoon from a friend of mine who said, I just want a shout out. So I, 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 I hit her back and I said, OK, well, is it your birthday? Is it uh, anniversary, special occasion? She, she said, no, I just need a shout out. So <laughs> I'm going to give her a shout out. Uh, Talia Palacio. Talia, I know she's probably listening. She works uh, at Rust College in Holly Springs, Mississippi, doing fine work down there. And she also has a show on this fine radio network on Saturday evenings at 8 o'clock. I'm not going to try to butcher it, but you should tune her in every Saturday night, 8 p.m., right here on this uh, fine radio station. You know, every now and again, we all just need to hear our names. We all just need a shout-out. So shout-out to you, Talia. I hope you had a great day. Um, wanted to get Before we uh, get into uh, to the uh, news and notes, I wanted to uh, reference uh, Notable Death. We were talking about it, uh, my, my gang, before the show, uh, Chesley Christ, she was the former 2019 Miss USA. Um, she's uh, apparently dead uh, of an apparent suicide uh, in Manhattan over the weekend in New York. Uh, apparently, she jumped off the roof of uh, the building that she uh, stayed in. Uh, she was only 30 years old. And this is a, a reminder to all of us, all of us out here. We were talking about it have been touched one way or another by someone who has uh, taken their own life far too soon. We read about it, we see it, we hear about it every day. Uh, It is uh, is a really, really, really tough uh, subject to deal with. But it should also let you know this. You never know what a person is going through. You never, ever know. You can't assume because someone is happy on the outside and they're, you know, you see them and they're, and they're full of joy and they, they greet you and everything looks well uh, on the outside. It may be very unwell on the inside. So you never know how a person is feeling. So it is very, very important for all of us uh, to try to treat each other with the utmost uh, love, care, and respect. So God uh, bless her. Uh, condolences to her family and her and her fans. Uh, she was also a correspondent on the show Extra, uh, so may her memory be a blessing uh, to us all. Uh, in other news and notes, uh, the Omicron variant uh, is starting to subside, and uh, I know for a lot of folks out there, you know, they're like, yeah, well, you know, we figured it would, and you know, all that kind of blah 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 blah. So if you're, if you're not vaccinated, I'm going to always tell you to vaccinate. I'm always going to tell you that the opportunity is there for you to vaccinate yourself to protect uh, not only yourself, but uh, others around you. Someone very close to me uh, contracted uh, COVID uh, last week and got pretty sick. And yes, uh, it was a breakthrough case. Uh, he did have his shots and his booster and still got it and got pretty sick, too, by the way. So this thing is still around, uh, even though the numbers are starting to decrease. So uh, I wouldn't be responsible if I did not tell you that uh, whether you choose to hear it or not, vaccination is a good way to try to keep from getting uh, really sick, hospital sick, and maybe something uh, even more tragic than that. Now, you can actually apply to the government. We talked about that. They're sending uh, free test kits per, for, per household uh, to anyone who sends them an email. As a matter of fact, I got mine over the weekend. So uh, it's always better to have and not want than want and not have, as uh, the old saying goes. Uh, you can also uh, get uh, tested 
and vaccinated at, or actually vaccinated at the uh, White Haven location of the Tennessee Southwest Community College. Uh, they are uh, giving vaccinations on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you live in that area, uh, you might want to roll by there if you haven't been vaccinated and get your shot. Uh, API is also uh, offering uh, vaccinations from 9 to 1 p.m. every day. It's uh, located um, off of Kirby Witten Road, close to uh, the interstate back over that way. So just uh, give them a call uh, to get the address and the information. Okay, so here's something that is, uh, <clears throat> to say the least, very puzzling to me uh, that I read uh, over, over uh, the weekend. Um, but before I, before I do that story, I also wanted to, uh, to share uh, some uh, news that was a bit difficult to hear over the weekend. Two children, uh, ages six and seven, uh, were found uh, drowning in a hotel, uh, East uh, Memphis Hotel uh, swimming pool Saturday night. Uh, one of the children, the seven-year-old, died. Uh, the other one is in the hospital uh, recovering. Uh, no one knows what, how, or anything. The investigation continues uh, in, in, in terms of that. And also, a 13-year-old female was shot and killed at a residence in Bahia, Mississippi, in Marshall County Saturday night. Uh, no suspects. The investigation there continues as well. So it's always tough out here. It really, it really is, it, each and every day. Uh, it's, it's something that we can't avoid uh, but uh, all we can do is continue to try to fight the best we can and, and say our prayers and, and lean on God when things that are like this happen that we just have no answers for. Now, to the story that uh, really sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just when I think, you know, I have seen it all and have heard it all, uh, something like this happens. So, we all know that the Tennessee legislature passed a law last year that allows 21-year-olds uh, and up to carry a concealed weapon without any sort of background check or test or anything else, right? Right. And we all knew that uh, when that passed, we were going to see an increase in gun violence and things like that. Well, uh, how do we solve this problem? Well, maybe this Tennessee legislator has the answer to the question. And I'm being as facetious as I possibly can before I even read it. Uh, he has said that he is going to propose a bill to the Tennessee House that says teenagers could soon be allowed to carry concealed weapons from the age of 18 up. So he wants to actually allow you to be able to carry a concealed weapon with no background check permit or anything from the age of 18 and up instead of 21 and up. Now, obviously, uh, local legislative leaders uh, and city leaders are very upset about even the, the thought of something like this happening. But he says that uh, if, if, if uh, 18, 19, and 20-year-olds are responsible enough to be able to carry a, a gun when they go to war in other countries, then they should be responsible enough to be able to be responsible gun carriers here. His name, by the way, the Republican uh, Tennessee representative is Chris Todd, and the bill is House Bill 1735. Now I'm just going to pause for a minute just, just, just to let that sink in. So we've already got a law that says anybody 21 and up can carry a concealed weapon with uh, no checks, no balances, no anything. This guy wants to propose that we lower that to age 18. Because if they can carry guns, you know, when they, when they uh, join the uh, <clears throat> service units out there, uh, military units out there, then they should be responsible enough to be able to carry a gun wherever they go, can see a weapon in their vehicle, 18 years and up. All right. So with that, and as I have to pause and, and, and take a breath myself, we're going to get into the show. And hopefully we have a pretty good show for you tonight. Um, actually, my first guest uh, who is waiting on me is uh, Colonel Vincent Beasley. Uh, he is uh, the Tillman Station Precinct pa uh, Commander for the uh, Memphis Police Department. And we're going to talk about uh, the challenges that he and other officers face on a daily basis 
here in our city, uh, you know, what, the, what we can do about all of this, what he thinks about it each and every day when he sends his officers out on the streets. Uh, a little bit later on, we uh, hope to speak to uh, Dr. Arthur Stewart uh, uh, from uh, the UT uh, Health Sciences Center uh, about a number of subjects, uh, including one we talked about a few minutes ago, which is uh, suicide and a lot of other uh, mental issues and challenges our young people face. A bit later on in the broadcast, the second half hour, I'm going to have uh, a couple of friends of mine on, on who have been on the show before, Reverend Rodney Kirkwood Sr. and Amandrill McLaughlin Jr. will be here. They are launching a brand new podcast, which is going to help all of us, hopefully, uh, be a better man. And it is called the Total Man Podcast. We're going to find out about it, uh, what was the idea behind it, and when you can catch it. But in the meantime, I'm Chip. This is Real Talk Memphis. We are going to take our first break, and we'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. The Brooks is open in Overton Park, home to Memphis art collection since 1916. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art holds the largest collection of world art in the region, with more than 10,000 works spanning 5,000 years of art and cultures. Remember, every Wednesday is free and open until 8 p.m. They are a proud sponsor of WYXR. For more information about the museum and their exhibitions, visit brooksmuseum.org. You belong at the Brooks. Memphis Listening Lab proudly supports WYXR. They provide a curated collection of music and music history, a forum for music-related talks and performances, and a music education, appreciation, and experimentation space located in Crosstown Concourse. The lab is open Tuesday through Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can find out more information on their Instagram page at Memphis Listening Lab or on their website at memphislisteninglab.org. Renowned dance artist Lil Buck stars in Memphis Jukin, the show, an ode to its hometown in Memphis, Tennessee, and the street dance culture of the Bluff City, which has drawn intrigue and emulation throughout the world of music, film, and stage performance. Memphis Jukin, the show, will premiere at the Orpheum Theater in Memphis on February 11th and 12th of 2022. Tickets and more info are available at orpheum-memphis.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this final day of January 2022. I cannot believe how quickly time has flown by. I want to check out my uh, my Facebook live feed here, and I see my brother Mike is checking in from California. What's good, boy? How you doing uh, out there in, on the West Coast? Uh, see, Audrey Hill is here with us tonight. Uh, Drill, who's going to be on the show in uh, about 30 minutes or so, he, he's he's already checking in a little early, and I'm um, trying to see if I. And my cousin, uh, my cousin. Uh, Carlissa is on here as well. Uh, she's checking us out. And Janice Chestnut, I see you as well. So thank you all for checking in tonight. And uh, Shirley, I see you. I see you there as well. So uh, gang's all here and gang's all out there too. Very happy to have you with us. I'm very happy to have my first guest with us tonight. Uh, we were talking about it. Uh, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's no secret that, uh, uh, that it's uh, pretty tough out here in the streets of Memphis these days in terms of uh, folks, uh, lack of respect, uh, lack of respect for authority, lack of respect for each other. We see about it. We hear about it every day. 
Uh, but my first guest is a man who faces it uh, head on uh, each and every day. Uh, he has uh, been with the uh, Memphis Police Department for, for many years, and uh, currently he commands the Tillman Station Precinct. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to have uh, Colonel Vincent Beasley joining me here on Real Talk. And Colonel Beasley, thank you again for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. No, thank, thank you for having me. So, you know, we all hear about it every day. You see it every day. Your men see it every day. Uh, it is uh, pretty tough out here, the crime situation uh, that is going on here in Memphis. And, of course, you command, you know, an entire precinct. So you have a lot of responsibilities, clearly. Uh, but I know one of uh, your, your responsibilities foremost is not only uh, uh, for your folks to try to keep the citizens safe, but always being concerned about your folks as well, because it seems these days uh, like the criminals don't have uh, any respect or regard for human life, or no matter who it is. And law enforcement uh, is, uh, is, is being attacked on, on that front as well. Am, am I uh, speaking out of turn here or, or said anything no. incorrect? No, I, I, I'll agree with everything you've said thus far. So, you know, I guess the, the question is for you, uh, you know, you always have to be thinking and, and, and planning and, 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 and trying to figure things out. You know, I, and I just guess I'll I, I just ask, you know, my, my first question is, because everybody seems to ask the same question uh, when things happen. You know, what's going on? What do we do about it? How do we fix it? Um, so I'll ask someone uh, who I would consider to be an expert in this particular field. But, I mean, in terms of what you see on a daily basis, how do we fix it? So uh, that, uh, you know, I, I wish I had the answer for it, for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think if I had the answer for it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd be filthy rich <laughs> because I could, because I could bottle it, bottle it up and sell it. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I, I really don't know, you know, I know there's some things that where we're, we're falling short. Uh, so, uh, one of the things I think is that, uh, uh, we, we've got to, we, we've got to, We've got to do a lot more mentoring, I think, with our youth. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there, there are programs in place where we're talking about catching our youth at, at a young age, and we're talking about 12 years old. Yeah. I feel like 12 years old is just too old. We waited too late uh, to wait until 12, so we start trying to teach them about positive things. Mm -hmm. So we've got, to, we've got to start talking to our kids at, at, at early ages. So you would have to admit that the children of the day are, are much wiser than we were. Yes, uh, they they're, they're, they are exposed to more things than we were at the ages where when we were their ages. So therefore, we have to start at a younger age and start talking to them and mentoring them and showing them good things and showing them uh, what right looks like, showing them that the the things they're seeing, uh, the games they're playing, those things uh, are real. So, you know, you know, I, I talked to a kid a couple of days ago. Who was telling me about a gun he found and, and he didn't realize that you you know once you shoot someone with that gun and he was 10 years old you shoot a person with that gun they're not going to get up like and call to like combat or whatever other games they play see that in, in their mind i'm going to shoot him and, and he or she's going to get up or i don't see the aftermath of it mm -hmm. so i i think that's one of the things but you know and those are things that are hard to control but i tell you i think a place where we're really failing though is that once those events occur in these in these kids' lives, they see so much bad stuff. I think we gotta put we gotta put uh, uh, some aftercare in place for them. We gotta put some uh, trauma focused training in place for them. Uh, I think they don't they don't get that. So you know the kids see shooting every day. Yeah. Uh, and and they're not getting anybody. Nobody's talking to them about it, how they're dealing with it or whatever. So they end up growing up dealing with it on their own, and and then they start following that lifestyle. So, you know, there was a couple of things I think that right off the bat we can do and it, and it wouldn't take a lot. Uh, you know, dollars are always a problem, but I can tell you now that if we don't start investing in them at an early age, we're going to spend a lot of more dollars later. Amen to that. Uh, we're speaking with uh, Colonel Vincent Beasley of the Memphis Police Department, and he's also the commander of the Tillman uh, Station Precinct. And a, a lot of what you said makes a lot of sense. And, and, and I'll, I'll say this, but, but I, I want to ask another question in reference to this. Are we, as a community, you know, the old saying, it, it takes a village to raise a child. 
and uh, a lot of these uh, conversations and a lot of the role models and a lot of the things and influences that they see do need to be corrected. But, I mean, are we as a community doing enough to help our, 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 our young people? Because they're the ones that seem to be not only the victims but the perpetrators of uh, so many violent crimes we see. So I, I can't I can't say that we are or we or we're not. Uh, I don't I don't know I don't I can't tell you how to answer that question. But I mean I know there's more that we can do. Mm-hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. I know there's more that we can do. And we just, you know a, a lot of times we we get comfortable in what we're doing. You know you know we're uh, we're, we're so in tune to our environment and, and w- what we're doing. And a lot of times we we miss what's happening with other people. So for instance, uh, a, a lot of these uh, youth that are involved in these things, so it, it goes back farther than them just being involved. We gotta figure out what happened to them as they were growing up. What 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 traumatized them? And in most cases, you'll find that they were traumatized somewhere mm-hmm. uh, as they were growing up. And we miss that. We miss that. And I, and I don't wanna offend anybody, but especially in the African-American community, you know, we tend to stay away. We don't want to. We don't want to take our kids to psychologists. We don't want to take them to psychiatrists. You know, because they get they get the, they get uh, uh, labeled as being crazy and all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. But in essence, they need to have professional people to talk to them and help them deal with the traumas that they've gone through. Mm-hmm. Because if they don't deal with the traumas, then those traumas are going to continue to mount. And the only way they know to deal with them after that is to become victims or victimize other people. Well, that's a that's a pretty heavy thing you just said, and uh, I mean, so there there, there are clearly you know um, levels to all of this um, is is what I'm getting from you uh, in in terms of what these uh, children are, 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 are at a very young age are being exposed to, and of course the family dynamic has 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 a lot to do with this as well. Uh, the role models of child are are, are hopefully their parents, and uh, you know if if the household is dysfunctional. Uh, then I would imagine in, in some way, shape, or form, this is going to affect uh, the psyche of a child growing up in that house. Would you say so? For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. So if you think about this, you know, several years ago, uh, uh, the, 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 the world was upset with Charles Barkley because of a statement he made. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, Charles Barkley said, I shouldn't be your child's role model. That's right. So, so he he been a famous athlete uh, with, with tons of money. He's telling us, I shouldn't be your child's role model. Uh-huh. That means I should be my child's role model. So what am I doing to ensure that my children are getting what they need? Yeah. They need to see me doing the right thing. They need to see me getting up every day. They need to see me getting on my knees at night praying. They need to see that. Mm-hmm. They need to see me. They need to see me reading. Uh, they need to see me. Uh, how do I get along with other people? They need to see me interacting with 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 my with my spouse. They need to see me doing those things. The positive things and they need to know that you know life can be fun and you don't have to do all the things that they're doing uh to get a thrill there are other things you can do to get a thrill so we've got to be our own role models we got to stop allowing the athletes to be our role models uh the rappers to be our role models for our children because and and uh, quite frankly uh some of the things they're doing are just not good uh examples well, wow, that's a that's that's pretty heavy. And, and, and before I, I have a, one final question, but I want to ask uh, the folks who are watching us on Facebook. I'm I'm, I'm seeing some a uh, couple of comments that they're saying that you guys are you can't hear uh, the responses of Colonel Beasley. If you can, uh, somebody needs to say yes. Uh, let me you know. Let me know if you can hear uh, what he's saying and uh, you know his responses because he's giving some very 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 real. Uh, on time responses to the question. So let me know. Um, I, I, I saw a couple of things where somebody said unable to hear the response. So um, if you can hear it, um, please on Facebook Live, let us know. But Colonel Beasley, uh, I, you know, what you said has a lot of merit and, and it really does. Now, I know that MPD had a, uh, a recruiting drive because you're shorthanded and it's hard to do your job on a daily basis, hard enough to do it on a daily basis now being shorthanded. And I saw that you had, uh, there was about 200 folks. Uh, who showed up, um, uh, and somebody is saying that we can't hear them, guys, so technically we might have an issue here that we need to try to fix on the board. You can hear? Okay, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but but uh, back to the recruiting uh, effort, 
that has got to make you feel a little bit better. Hopefully we can get more folks in the system. Maybe people are starting to pay attention, not just for bonuses and things like that, but who really want to help. So uh, as a commander of a unit, uh, what are you looking for in a, a, in a young officer uh, wanting to be a part of the MPD? So I, I'm looking for someone who, who, who had, so I, we all are servants and, you know, and you have to have that servant and servant attitude in order to do this job. Right. So if you're coming on the job to become rich, it'll never happen. Right. Uh, it, it'll never happen. Right. If you're coming over the job that for a, a ton of glory, it'll never happen. So we need people that are want that want to serve, that want to serve their community, that want to make their community better. You know, I, my, my daughter reminded me just, uh, a couple of nights ago, I, I am very fortunate. Uh, uh, I grew up, I grew up exactly where I'm sitting right now. The 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 my the apartment complex I lived in was exactly where this precinct is now, and I grew up here. So I was fortunate. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I made some mistakes in my life. I had some people to mentor me. I had people that to try to get me back on track. And, and all of those things. So I, I would want somebody, yes, I mean, nobody's perfect. You, of course, you want people to have made mistakes, and now you want people to want to change their lives around, but not only change their lives, want to change the people around you. You want to change their lives and make their lives better. And that's what we're looking for in people that want to join this department. Good, wholesome people who want to who want to make a change, who want to see their city uh, not get the, not get the 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 bad reputation that it has gotten because the city of memphis is a great place to live and when you think about it yeah. it's just that we've got some we've got some things that we need to work on and we need more people who want to see us be successful who want to erase that stigma that's associated with memphis tennessee well said sir well said colonel vincent beasley of the memphis police department thank you sir for taking a few minutes of your schedule to come on and talk with us tonight on Real Talk. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you, sir, and have a good evening. You too. Thank you very, very much. Colonel Vincent Beasley, ladies and gentlemen, from the Memphis Police Department, had a lot of good things to say. Uh, but uh, you know, we all uh, play a role in uh, what happens in our city, and uh, I think that's something that uh, none of us uh, need to uh, forget. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we're going to delve a little deeper into uh, the psychology of some of these young folks, uh, some of the pressures that they're facing, and from someone who is an expert in the field. This is Real Talk Memphis. I'm your host, Chip. We will be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Support for WYXR comes from the Germantown Performing Arts Center, presenting Dee Dee Bridgewater and Memphis Sulfony live in the Duncan Williams Performance Hall, Saturday, February 12th at 8 p.m. Tickets and more information at gpacweb.com. You ain't nothing but a Discover your next favorite artist at the Memphis Songwriter Series at the Halloran Center, hosted by Memphis songwriter Mark Edgar Stewart. On February 17th, Mark and his musical guests will take you on a journey behind their music, share personal stories, and introduce exciting new music. For more information on the Memphis Songwriter Series, visit orpheum-memphis.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Real 
And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Chip here with you. Uh, glad you are along for the ride. I heard, to understand we had uh, a few audio difficulties maybe in that last segment. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is radio and, you know, my folks are saying everything is good. Hopefully we will continue that pattern as we move forward. My next guest is someone... Uh, who I would say is a, an authority on uh, really uh, identifying uh, what our young black youth are, are dealing with in a lot of ways. And one of the topics I want to talk about a little bit uh, while we have her for a few minutes is um, suicide, uh, uh, teen suicide, youth suicide among our black uh, youth. She is Dr. Alpha Stewart. She is the director for the Center for Youth Advocacy and Wellbeing and the Center for Health and Justice Involved Youth, among many, many other programs. And very happy to have her with us uh, from the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Dr. Stewart, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here with you tonight to talk about this very important uh, issue. So we have a few minutes, so uh, we're going to ch- kind of jump right into it. And I read, uh, uh, you know, some of your uh, some of your work and, and, and some of your papers in reference to this. And we talked at the beginning of the broadcast about uh, the former Miss uh, Teen, uh, former Miss uh, USA, uh, who committed suicide over the weekend at the very young age of 30 years uh, mm-hmm. old. Um, we, we never know what someone is dealing with, uh, but you, on a daily basis, uh, study uh, things like this. And tell us a little bit about uh, kind of what you see and, 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 what you, and what you deal with in terms of kind of reaching the next level. Well, that, that's a great starting point. So thank you for, for teeing it up like that. One of the first things we have to understand is that for us in the Black community, just talking about suicide has always been like a taboo. Uh, I, I grew up hearing Black people don't commit suicide. It wasn't until I became a psychiatrist and started seeing instances where people actually were doing harm to themselves in an attempt to commit suicide that I understood how wrong that that whole mindset was. Right. And right. and today we still carry some of that. And we've had a, a flurry of these high profile cases that at least have got us talking about it, uh, which on the one hand is a good thing. But unfortunately, it, it came at the price of people having to lose their lives because we, we didn't pay attention. We didn't understand, as you said, what they were going through. And we haven't really begun to grasp the kinds of things that lead a person to feel that hopeless, that helpless, that despondent, that without the willingness to find another way to stay alive. We have young kids as young as seven and eight committing suicide. That is unheard of. We should not be even thinking about those kinds of events happening, but they are. A lot of it has to do with something that Colonel Beasley uh, mentioned in your previous segment. We don't pay attention to the signs because we don't recognize them when they occur. Mm -hmm. Kids who are depressed, kids who are being traumatized, kids who are being abused, kids who have nothing to look forward to that is positive in their lives are at risk for considering and perhaps completing suicide. Uh, and, And those are things that we've just got to get better at. We need to train people, parents, caregivers, community members, ministers, teachers, bus drivers, cafeteria workers to recognize these signs and to talk to these kids and hopefully get them to someone who can help them. Um, You know, he talked about it's always about the money. That's true. But right now, if we don't, he said it so well, if we don't make this investment now, more of our kids will die from suicide. The data is very clear. Uh, The reporting out on young black kids and the rate of suicide increase is astounding. We have to stop this now. We are speaking with uh, Dr. Alpha Stewart uh, from the uh, University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center. And we're really delving into a, a, a deep and, and, and serious uh, subject because we're losing our kids, you know, on, 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 on many levels. Uh, not only uh, from what she was just uh, so eloquently talking about, but violence in the streets and, mm-hmm. you know, violence in home and, and, mm-hmm. and the, the pressures that, that, that they feel every, every day. And, and we were talking, uh, I was talking to my producers before the show, Dr. Stewart, about uh, this particular subject. And, uh, and one of them said that, uh, you know, her uh, daughter, who's 16, 
uh, had a friend the same age who committed suicide. And mm-hmm. it, it is just we, we don't know what's going on. I, I, and I'll be I'll be honest with you. You know, it just it's just so difficult for me to understand why someone so young who really hasn't formulated or begun to live life, um, you know, could be in such a desperate place. And uh, can you can you help me with that that particular m- hopeless, mindset? Hope, hopeless and helpless and despondent are the primary uh, things going on in the minds of these young people. They have been confronted with just absolutely phenomenal kinds of issues that they have to deal with. The pressure of social media, the pressure of, of being uh, better, of doing better, the pressure of being accepted by your peers. Uh, in some cases, the pressure of just living in a household that is chaotic and traumatizing and having no outlet. Uh, and, and while giving kids mentors and offering them support programs after school and having resources in the school is a good first step for many of these kids, if they can't get out of the house or out of the community where they're constantly bombarded, at some point they give up hope. And they either accept the fact that they've got to join the violence and the chaos and the trauma, or they decide they can't go on and they'd rather not be around. Uh, when you talk to young people who are feeling this way, it, it is really very painful to hear how despondent a child of yeah. 15 or 16 can actually be. Yes. Yeah. That, that, I mean, you know, what, what you're saying is something I think that every uh, parent uh, needs to hear. And, and, and anyone who, you know, has, has a child in your family, whether you're a brother, whether you're an uncle, aunt, whoever, um, you know, these are, um, and, and always, it, 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 to me, it always sends me back to one thing. We need to communicate with our children. I mean, right now, there's a lot of distraction. Colonel Beasley talked about that, too. There's a mm-hmm. lot of other distractions that have their attention, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, potentially it's the street. Um, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, as well. There's a great pull there. But, but Dr. Stewart, we really do need to spend a lot more time talking with our children. Do you, do I, you agree? I can't tell you how many times a parent or a guardian or a grandparent has said to me, something is wrong. I don't know what it is, but something is wrong. Folks know their children. And when you know that something is wrong in your gut, you cannot accept I'm okay, or it's just a phase, or even talk yourself into believing it's just a phase they're going through and they'll grow out of it. When you have those feelings, Uh, listen to them when the hair on the back of your neck uh, stands up and says, no, this, this is different. This is something else. They're not sleeping. They're running with a different crowd. They're behaving differently. A child who was always respectful and polite suddenly becomes, you know, uh, flying off the handle all the time, cursing and, and telling you to leave them alone. Um, You know, those are the, those are the signs that we cannot ignore. The other caution I would offer for anybody who has, Uh, responsibility for a a child today is as you go through these back and forth with them, look for signs that this is really different and I need to pay attention and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid. Don't be put off because black folks don't need mental health services. Don't allow those myths to take over and let you let you lose that child. Well, Dr. Stewart, I could I could spend uh, an hour talking to you about this, and I'm going to have you back on the show to to to, to, to delve deeper into this uh, topic and, and discussion. But I got to move on now. But thank you so so me, much for coming on tonight. I, let uh, me just give one number for anybody absolutely, listening who needs absolutely, some help. Absolutely, nine zero one four four eight four two zero zero. Call that number. It's our program at the University of Tennessee. We have specialists who will come to you if need be to evaluate your child and make a recommendation for how you can get some help. Dr. Stewart, uh, thank you so much for uh, the work that you do on a daily basis. I will have you back on this show if you are willing to come on because this is the conversation that, that needs to be continued. But thank you so much for coming tonight. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, have a good night. Thank you so much. Well, there's a lot to think about, and uh, there, there, there is, there's always things that we can do um, to help our young people uh, because, uh, as she said, and as Colonel Beasley said earlier, we don't know what they're going through. 
Uh, you never know what somebody's going through on the outside because what you see on the outside uh, may be a whole lot different on the inside. I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, uh, I'm going to talk to two gentlemen uh, who are launching a podcast uh, that uh, men need to pay attention to. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about the Total Man podcast with a couple of folks that I know very well. This is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. Quick break. Right back. Discover your next favorite artist at the Memphis Songwriter Series at the Halloran Center, hosted by Memphis Songwriter. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Renowned dance artist Lil Buck stars in Memphis Jukin' The Show, an ode to its hometown in Memphis, Tennessee, and the street dance culture of the Bluff City, which has drawn intrigue and emulation throughout the world of music, film, and stage performance. Memphis Jukin' The Show will premiere at the Orpheum Theater in Memphis on February 11th and 12th of 2022. Tickets and more info are available at orpheum-memphis.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday, an information-filled Monday to be sure. Now, my next guest are uh, two fellas that I know uh, pretty well. We are all members of the same church, Full View uh, Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. Uh, They are both men of God. I can tell you that because I know it firsthand. Uh, and, 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 And fine men, period. Now, for whatever particular reason, they decided uh, that they wanted to launch a podcast, uh, and uh, it is called the Total Man Podcast, and uh, because I guess they feel like, you know, for us men, there is a greater responsibility, but I'm not going to put words in their mouth. I'm going to let them talk after I introduce them. Very happy to have on board uh, Reverend Rodney Kirkwood Sr. and Mandrill McLaughlin Jr. They are the host of the all-new and upcoming podcast called Total Man, and gentlemen, Thank you for being hey. here with me tonight on Real Talk. What's up, hey, Chip? How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to be, good to be here. So yeah. listen, so listen, guys, uh, and thank you, thank you both for being here. And uh, I'm going to jump right into this. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit offline about this. You decided because uh, you guys talk uh, on a daily basis about about a lot of things uh, to kick off uh, a brand new podcast called the Total Man podcast so i'm gonna be quiet and let uh one or both of you uh tell our listeners exactly what it's all about and why you decided to launch it awesome okay well (laughs) well you know first of all chip it's good to be on here tonight man um just to um talk about uh the total man podcast that we'll be launching uh the second week of february okay that's our first episode in the second week of february um, I believe it's February seventh, seventh, one of the two. Okay. Anyway, well, we'll get a correct date. <laughs> but um, we we started the podcast, man, because me and Drill, of course, we back in two thousand and thirteen, uh, in two thousand and fourteen, uh, Drill and I were a um, group with ten other men, and we started a book. Or we wrote a book uh, called uh, 12 uh, Kings and Their Treasure. Mm-hmm. And we developed a lot of good um, conversations about things that men go through. Um, the book really consists of 12 men giving their greatest testimonies at that time mm-hmm. okay. of God's um, 
delivering hand, uh, the way God kept us, the way God shielded us from different things for us to get to the point of where we are right now. Right. And one of the things we recognize as men is, you know, our, our, our pride, our stubbornness, our unwillingness <laughs> to communicate, uh, talk, um, showing uh, areas of vulnerability and transparency, right? Mm -hmm. And in those areas, man, Chip, that's where we fail in society. That's where we fail in society. And the base scripture that um, really told a man to center it around is when Jesus said in John 10 and 10, uh, the thief coming not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. Right. And the abundant life has to do a lot with wholeness, holistically, not just um, spiritual uh, wholeness, but also mental wholeness, emotional wholeness, physical wholeness. Mm -hmm. And that's the part of what we're talking about, total man, being holistic. Total man is not a man that's perfected. Total man is a man who it's operating in a healthy state, all right? Because even in the healthiest state, we're not 100%, right? However, we can walk in a level of healthiness mentally and emotionally. And when we do that, I believe uh, as men, we uh, can start the repair of things that have been broken in society, starting with our young men that we were, that we we're talking about, the youth. Um, but I believe it starts with the man. Uh, who is whole, who is um, complete, not perfect, but whole and complete to where he's operational uh, and being instrumental in uh, helping others, right? Starting with himself and then being able to be used by God in the way that God wants to use him to reach out to others. That's what we're talking about in the total man. So in the total man, we're going to deal with different subjects, yeah. different topics that is geared toward men. But the principles can be applied with women and youth as well. We're speaking with uh, Rodney Kirkwood Sr. and Amandra McLaughlin Jr. Uh, they are the host of the new podcast, which will be launched uh, in February, called A Total Man. Now, uh, Drill, um, <laughs> you know, I know, I know, you know, you're a you're a young you're a young um, man with a young family. You have two sons. Uh, who are just absolutely uh, adorable, and so uh, so so piggybacking on what uh, Rodney said, really about the the, the responsibilities uh, that go along with this, you know, uh, from the from the man's perspective, we're not perfect, uh, but we do have a responsibility in, in in many ways, and sort of sort of piggyback off of that, and I know that's very important to you, particularly as a father to two young boys. Yeah, and early, I, you know, I, I check into the show, and I was watching Colonel Beasley. I was listening to the conversation, and it was pertinent, you know, because um, of what he was talking about, especially with uh, young children who are experiencing things conducive to gun violence. Um, and um, and Dr. Stewart and and her her input, I, I, what you've done tonight is so wonderful because it's a it acts as a blockchain, and we're just we are a part of the solution. TMP is a part of that solution because if we can invest in them when they're young we can invest in their lives and invest in their growth and invest in their spiritual building then we won't be investing in their incarceration yeah because i mean you're looking at it it's fifty thousand dollars per person per unit in a seven by seven you know i'd rather invest in my two sons now in the training up you know, and TMP is going to do a lot of that. See, when we wrote the book, it was a lot of things that was cracked that the Lord cracked into. You know, we got a chance to crack into with uh, our call names. I'm the shark and he's the living sword. So there's a lot of things that we get into. It's a lot of deep waters we're going to swim into. And it's a lot of things that the sword is going to cut into. And um, and then and, and, and dealing with that with our sons, teaching them. A lot of it is hands-on. A lot of it is practical application. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just having the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm really here to call out the big gorilla in the room. You, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Because mm -hmm. if we don't talk about it, then it'll keep on whooping you. And, you know, and who wants to be 60 with a black and blue eye? And, and you know, or you be you can be rich, but you can be so unsuccessful as far as like, you know, your children being um, viable citizens and good Christian men, 
in my family. So would 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 uh, would would you both say that uh, it was one of the one of the one of the basic levels of uh, the Total Man podcast is accountability, holding us to accountability. Yeah. Accountability is 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 huge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's what we're here to do. We want to we want to have the conversation because obviously it's a lot of youngsters that are not having that conversation. I mean, and they might not even have. You know, we're already surrogates to a certain extent. It's a lot of young brothers and young sisters that do look for conversation. We're doing a um, a short podcast. We did something with uh, Shelby County and Chief Pope out at West Memphis. Mm. Um, they came and we did something called Shop Talk out at um, Royal Country Club Salon for Men. Shout out to uh, Reggie and Mimi out in Cordova there. Um and that was a big part of it. It's really sharing, having the conversation, but also having it from not just a carnal sense, but from a spiritual kind. Because all of this stuff, people think that the spiritual doesn't affect you. Man, we living in it. Yeah. And if you don't talk about it and open them up to it, because they get enough of it on the TV and every other you know outlet. Yeah, yeah. We we have to be in the conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rodney, you got you you you, 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 you totally agree, man. Yeah, uh huh. It, it just starts with accountability. Uh, you you have to be accountable for um, where you are, right? You got to call out mistakes that you made, mistakes that you may be making now, in order to, um, you know, to be effective in helping not only men but also the youth, man, who is our next generation, man. You know, it's all about preserving them and yet equipping them uh, for for the future, man. But it starts with accountability for real. Well, listen, I am I am very, very uh, excited uh, for you both. Uh, I, I know you both, you know, as 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 uh, uh, ministers and, and, and men of, of, of the church. Uh, I know your heart and I, and I know. Uh, your sincerity, uh, both of you. I, I'm just, I'm very proud of uh, of, of of both of you. And uh, as this effort uh, gets underway, uh, sometime in February, give me when when you when you get all this, you know, the, the particulars and everything really firm down, laid out. Uh, send me that information so I can make sure I pass it on uh, to uh, our audience. And I'm just gonna say before you guys go, we need to support. Programs like this. We need to support efforts like this. Um, these two are saying, look, you know what? We're not going to stand by the sidelines and watch. We're going to get in the game and try to see if we can't do something about it and make maybe influence some folks. That's what we need. But what we need more so than that is you, uh, radio listening audience, podcasters, uh, whoever it is out there. If you listen to podcasts, if you listen to radio, whatever it is, support efforts like this. OK, because this is what we need in this world. And this is important. And Rodney and uh, Drill, I am so, like I said before, very proud of you guys. And I am going to be your number one fan on your podcast. <laughs> and, but, but I want to thank you both for coming on the show tonight and uh, breaking it down in the simplest, most common denominator type terms. And I look forward to your show. And uh, again, thank you all for coming on. Man, all right. We thank you, bro. And and chill. Yes, sir. Listen, man. Uh, God bless you, dude. Okay. Uh, we're 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 grateful for your continued recovery. Um, yeah, buddy. You with you and Wanda, man. It's just still a beautiful story. Yeah. Uh, just to just to even be part of the family of people that pray for you, and you and Wanda that this thing will work out. And and look at you now. You know, look at what look at what God is doing, man. man. So. Um, the fact that God brought you through and <laughs> brought you and Wanda through, man, yeah. is the reason why we're even still here doing what we're doing. So um, even to be on the show tonight. So bless you, man. And our, our prayers are, are um, continually with you and Miss Wanda. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You guys take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll be talking soon, okay? Yes, All sir. right. All right, thank you. Uh, that's a great way to end the show. And as uh, Lola plays us out, uh, glad to have you. This was a powerful, powerful hour. And if you didn't hear it uh, right now tonight, 
We're going to be posting on YouTube. Uh, of course, this is Facebook Live, so you can see it anytime you want to. Uh, it's a podcast, so it'll be posted tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so please check it out. Uh, and I'm, I'm just so fortunate to be able to be here to provide programs like this. Uh, so for Lola, for Jack, and for Nicole, for all of us here at Real Talk Memphis, thank you for being with us. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. Between now and then, I'm Chip, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>